But we were in a position, they're telling us if she does live, not only will it financially devastate you, which is a man's, you know, a man thinks about that. It's his job to take care of his family, and he thinks about that. We had four other children. Um, so that, you know, that was a big burden. The other thing is, they told us if she does live, she will be severely handicapped, probably even a vegetable. And then you start to think of quality of life. Do you want, you know, to have a child that's a vegetable? What's her quality of life? How do you pray in that situation? How do you pray? And that's where Larry, I'm just going to give it right to you because it pops back those two verses to Romans 8.26 that says, when we don't know how to pray as we should, the Holy Spirit himself intercedes with groanings too deep for words. And he who knows the mind of the Father and the heart of the person praying, what's the rest part right there? Will intercede according to the will of God according to the will of God and we know all things work together for those who love the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Isn't that I think one more thing about Tatiana, uh, the therapist at school uh, said she'll never walk on aid in the rest of her life. It's interesting because we were just watching videos from the Shriners Hospital and that's another miracle hundreds of miracles that have taken place. I mean, uh, just beyond the natural mind. We got our Shriners to take care of her. Within 24 hours, uh, it was just kind of an afterthought that we sent a letter to them because of her grandfather. And uh, I said, you didn't even indicate that he's a Shriner his whole life. That Honey, that would have helped us. I said, well, it's in God's hands. Within 12 hours, we get a phone call. I don't know how they got that letter so quick. Uh, they're all, this, this is the Shriners. We read your application. We're going to take care of your daughter for the rest of her life. That's what happened. And she, she couldn't, at five years old, uh, and we saw the videos from the Shriners, her little foot, her, was it her left or right foot, was just dragging, it was limp. It was just dragging along like this. And so they operated on her, both legs. Hamstrings were like zigzag. They cut them. The tendon, the Achilles tendon, same thing. They stretched her legs out. And for how many months was that? Four months or so? She was in two casts. And, and then we thought, well, we're still believing she's going to walk, you know? I mean, we really felt that the therapist, this is now, she's seven, almost seven years old, said she'll never walk on eight of the rest of her life. And she had her little walker, and she's walking along with the walker in a wheelchair. But this one day, and this is like three, four days after she made that prediction, little Tatiana standing there, unaided. Wendy was putting clothes on and she said, Dad, look. And uh, I said, Honey, look. And then she kind of fell down. So I picked her up, put her against the wall. I said, Honey, walk to Mommy. And she took one, two, three steps and then fell down. Wendy wasn't able to catch her. And I said, Honey, move back. She moved back five. I said, Go again. One, two, three, four, five. Five steps she made. By the end of the day, and my mother-in-law, her mom was there, and the, the daughters, and Matthew, and we're watching her, and she walked 52 steps without falling down, you know? But, you know, in the midst of this, and every one of us, uh, every single person here could have a testimony of how, you, literally, you've gone through hell and worse. How many know that? Rejection? How many have had rejection in your life? It, uh, the pain is unbearable, uh, you know, and I can't really identify with your pain. We're all different. That's the beautiful thing about God. We're all unique. We're all different. And, you know, a lot of times there's friends. Uh, friends kind of tick you off sometimes, don't they? I mean, uh, they want, they're there for you. They're not. Most people are not there for you because everyone's got their own problems. Now, maybe you're fortunate and might have one or two or three friends in your lifetime that are there for you, either to make a loan or to pray for you or really be concerned. But some of us, and I don't care who you are, and you could be someone, you know, maybe a high-profile athlete or an individual, 
and still they're, they're in the same situation because relationships are fleeting and most times people are looking up, you know, what can I get for myself? They have their own agenda, but in terms of unconditional love, the very few and far between are friends that stick closer than a brother. That Jesus, that's the Lord, of course. But even in our situation, we had a lot of friends helping and praying and all that, but still, you know, people don't really totally comprehend what we go through when we're hurting so bad. And that verse, just think about it, Romans 8, 28. I, I, I'd like you guys, though, when you get home or whatever in your room, study the three verses and just meditate on them. In our weakness, when we don't know how to praise, we should. The Spirit himself intercedes through us with groanings too deep for words. When, when we're facing, we didn't know our insurance, and that's a miracle. What a great story. We could write a book just on that one story on the insurance company, how God fulfilled that one. But... Uh, to have somebody, there's no human being that's going to groan in your hurt. You know, and I don't care if you're a pastor or you're the most compassionate person. You're not going to groan in the hurt of that individual. But God miraculously has given us an ability to pray in an unknown language. It's called praying in the Spirit. He's given us that incredible gift. And what bothers me more than anything else in the churches today across America, even the Assemblies of God, we're guilty guilty more than anyone, because we've tasted of the Spirit of God. We've experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We know that when we walk in righteousness, we have the power to live an overcoming life, because God has given us a dimension of power that's unparalleled. There's nothing like it. There's no atom bomb that can bear to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing in this world, no, no evil power. God gave it to us. And just think about it. Jesus said, don't leave Jerusalem. But wait for what the Father has promised, which you heard of from me. John baptized in water, but you'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And those disciples waited. They waited on God. They were believers. They were all Christians. And the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a, a noise, like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And here's the favorite part of that verse. And they were all, A-L-L. <coughs> God's not prejudiced. Amen? Yeah, God loves each one of us individually. I don't care the color of your skin or your background or who you are or how wealthy you are or how poor you are. All. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. And I know just going through that experience, and, and I know many of you have had a lot worse than I probably had, but the fact that in our weakness, psychologically, mentally, every way we're limited how many realize this is our worst enemy right here our mind and god <laughs> knew this and and he gave us the precious holy spirit to infill us and indwell us and then in in terms of prayer walt i don't know how many times you've done this or louine i know you have but when you get up on the side of the mountain or you're in your car or wherever and there are no words to communicate to god what the need is and you're confounded, you're confused. The enemy comes in like a flood. And all of a sudden you realize, in my weakness, when I don't know how to praise we should, the Spirit of God himself will intercede through me in groanings too deep for words. And I remember with her and the, my daughter and the financial pressure, just everything. Uh, I, I could hear myself crying in sobs. I didn't even know I was capable of crying. And I don't cry very often. I'm more now probably in my older age. But uh, a groaning kind of cry. And then I would just start to pray in the Spirit. And as I prayed in the Spirit, within seconds, it's like that the weight of the world was off my shoulders. I entered into a whole different realm. A different realm that was truly supernatural. And why the church would turn their back on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I have no idea. I mean, it's like having a football team and you've got every receiver you have on your team is Larry Fitzgerald. Why would you not want to throw the ball to Larry Fitzgerald? You know, that's a terrible analogy, I know. But, you know, we, we've got this incredible power. I was in India, Calcutta, India, back in 1977. I remember driving down the streets from the airport and seeing the thousands of people laying in the streets and we think we have some poverty and homeless issues here. You need to go to Calcutta. It's the hellhole of the world. 
And I'm, I wanted to go there for one reason, because I wanted to meet Mark Buntain, the great Mark Buntain. In, in Calcutta, India, he's as famous as Sister Teresa, Mother Teresa. And, but as we went through those streets and finally went into our hotel and these little babies are grabbing at our arms, mothers are holding them, tears, holding out their hand for money, you know, they're starving to death and we kind of just got in there. It was, it was more than we could deal with. Uh, some of the ladies that were from Texas, I'll never forget this, locked themselves in the rooms. They didn't want to go out the next day. I mean, the demonic presence was so un unbelievable. And I learned a lesson. You know, in reading my Bible, Paul said, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. Why would he say that? Why would he say with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit? There was a reason for it. And it took me leaving Phoenix, Arizona, flying all the way to Calcutta, India to find the answer to that. I was with Mark Montaigne the next day in a car. We're traveling along and I'm speaking to him. We're both Canadian uh, from Edmonton, Alberta. So we had things we had, I, you know, that we had in common that we could discuss. And this guy would be talking to me about things. All of a sudden, he stops talking in English, and he starts praying in tongues. And he'll be driving, you know, dodging people and cattle and noise and everything. It's just chaos over there. And he's praying in tongues. And then we'll start communicating again in English. And then five, ten minutes later, again, he's praying in tongues on the top of his voice. And he built this great hospital there in India. We're walking down the hallway, same thing, the whole time we're walking, he's praying in the spirit. There was a feeding line of people, 30,000 people a day at the city dump, they're feeding them. He's praying in the spirit. The kids running around, their beautiful little blue uniforms, and I, I admire those two boys, I don't know who they are, but guys, let me tell you something, you just keep walking with God, and I appreciate you singing the songs and worshiping the Lord. That really did something for me. It touched my heart. I remember when I was your age, how old are you kids? About 12? 11 and 12. When I was their age, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit at camp. And I prayed in the Spirit all night. And I remember walking down through the sawdust uh, in the barn, up to the cabin, looking at the stars. They were like as bright as could be. And I said something in my spirit at that age that literally changed my life. And it, it was the most important thing next to my salvation that ever happened. And, you know, suffer the children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And boys, today I expect you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit before I leave. Because you need to taste of the goodness of God at your young age. And, but Mark Plantain was, you know, it made such an impression. I was born in Pentecost. I experienced that when, when I was 12. But as humans, many times we have a tendency to forget. Or we kind of, we, we get into that realm of mediocrity in our Christian walk. And I don't care who you are, we all have dry spells. How many believe that? Amen. Billy Graham, Tommy Barnett, even Walt Rittray has had dry spells in his life. We all do at times. And many times it takes a crisis to bring us back into the relationship that we need with God. And I'll tell you what, in this country, it's probably gonna take the persecution of the church before we get upon our faces and we start crying out to God and, and crying out for this fulfillment of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, I'll do that in the last days. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all mankind. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Walt and I are going to be dreaming dreams. Your young men will see visions. And even on your male and female servants, I'll pour out my spirit in those days. You know, and I'm not a last days kind of guy. Because people will talk to me about prophecy and the end of the times and the signs and all that. And, you know, and I'll, I'll, well, it's in God's time fail. I'm not really overly concerned about it, but I am now. At this time in my life, the way I see the world, it's a one-world thing, that the dem demonic power, the economic pro problems, uh, the war with the Muslims, and the, the hatred and the division that we have, not just in this country, but around the world. And the time is near. I believe that with all my heart. And God is coming for a church that's pure. God is coming to a church that whose garment is not soiled, but is pure. And I'm, I'm just telling you right now, the greatest gift that God has is not intimidating you, but it's loving you. And conviction. How many thank God for His convicting power? Yeah. And I love God so much because I know how imperfect I am. I know how many mistakes I, I've made in my life. Too many to mention. But God says, Larry, I love you in spite of that. And I said, God, I'm sorry. 
please forgive me. And he's there with his arms wide open, yeah, again and again and again and again and again. How many are thankful for that? Amen. You know, we don't, uh, we're not perfect, we never will be, but boy, I'll tell you what, I'd rather walk with God, be able to give this wonderful gift. Now, why do we pray in the Spirit? What's the reason for it? First of all, the Bible says, one who speaks or prays in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands, but in his spirit, he speaks mysteries, okay? Again, in our weakness, mentally, this is the problem right here. And that, that's why scripture memorization is so important. And Louine, I know, and, and Walt, I don't know about Walt as much, but I know Louine and has, has been a very strong proponent of it. And I think, are they involved in scripture memory here? You're kidding me. Honest? Okay, who knows Philippians 1.13? Anybody? Philippians? Who knows Proverbs or Psalms 1, 1 through 3? Anybody? Okay, back there, raise your, stand up and yell it out so we can hear you. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, but his light is in the law of the Lord, and meditates day and night. And he'll be like what? He'll be like the tree of the water. And what? Amen. Give him a hand. Isn't that awesome? Okay. One who speaks in the tongue doesn't speak to men but to God. No one understands, but in his spirit he speaks mysteries. One who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. We're being strengthened. We're strengthened by the word. We're strengthened by prayer with the intellect, but we're also definitely strengthened by praying in the Holy Ghost. And when you pray with the mind, it's, it's up here. You know, you're praying and, and you're thinking. And, but when you pray in the Spirit, it comes right out of your gut, right out of the innermost being. Jesus said, it'll flow rivers of living water. Paul said, um, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. And when you look up Ephesians, how many have read about spiritual warfare, putting on the, the whole armor and taking up the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit? But it's interesting, most commentators, and I looked at a lot of the different commentators, uh, when they talk, when, when Paul says, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit, they don't mention praying in tongues, you know? But that's what Paul meant. Paul said, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, my mind is unfruitful. What is the outcome? I'll pray with the Spirit, I'll pray with my mind also. I'll sing with the Spirit, and I'll sing with my mind also. And the reason for that is, again, because we have the ability to communicate with God, no matter how weak we are, how frail, but there's a strengthening process that takes place. And, and what it does, too, it anoints the word that you meditate on. And there's times when I'll be meditating on Scripture, and then I'll start praying in the Spirit, and then I'll start meditating on Scripture. There's one verse I'll, I'll never forget, because I, I reviewed it hundreds of times, hundreds of when we started the Master's Commission back in 85, a good friend of mine, and you guys know him well, Carmen Balsamo, he was my buddy, a uh, friend of mine dropped him off at my doorstep back in 19, what year was it, 82, 81, 80, somewhere in there, and he was in the moving business, and he was a salesman, and my buddy was a minister moving back to Springfield, Missouri, and he led Carmen to Christ. Carmen moved five different pastors, no one had ever shared their faith. This guy did, Tom Hinton, and Carmen accepted the Lord. So he came into my life. I thought he'd be gone. I thought, okay, he'll join the church, and, but every day he's at my doorstep. And it was, I either was going to be annoyed by the guy, or I was just going to welcome him into my life. And finally, I mean, he was so determined, and we prayed all the time. I mean, we prayed over everything. We witnessed all the time. And we read a book called uh, The Navigator by Dawson Trotman, and so we started to apply some of the principles that the navigators did. Scripture memorization was one, studying the word, prayer, and of course evangelizing. And we made a deal where we would witness to someone at least once a day, Not, in, but the church didn't count. It had to be out in the streets. That's why I appreciate this church. I'll tell you what, you guys. If Pastor Tommy Barnett was not at Phoenix First Assembly, Wendy and I would be here at this church. I've never seen anything like it. I, I have, because we used to have a college and career class just like this that would meet the needs of the kids and all the things, but to see the testimonies that you guys have and being out Sunday morning with the cross, and man, we're just, we're overjoyed with what we've seen here. And, but getting back to my topic, where did I go? I just wandered away. Well, where was I, do you remember? 
The Holy Spirit. Okay. Dawson Trotman. Thank you, honey. But Carmen and I, uh, I'll never forget the night he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I mean, God just touched us. He started praying in other tongues. He went into the house to tell his wife, and she's on her knees with her hands praying in the Spirit. Simultaneously, it happened. They were baptized in the Holy Ghost. And what happened with us, we just, our vision was strengthened. And we were ready to take on the world. I mean, no doubt about it. Nothing, and it was so wonderful because after those times of prayer in the Spirit, uh, I don't care what we were facing. Life was just, it was so much more fun. And it was enjoyable. And there was no, that yoke, Jesus said, my yoke is easy. But for us not to pray in the Spirit, I think if I'm not praying in the Spirit daily, uh, I take on the pressure of the world. And then I start analyzing things. I've got to figure out how am I going to get out of this mess, or how am I going to raise this money, or how am I going to do that. But when I'm busy doing the things of God, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and the money will follow if it's money. The needs will be met. Right now we've got 600 kids in our football program. I used to, We started a... Uh, Athletes International back in 85 with a uh, master's commission and um, we've had over 10,000 athletes attend our conference every year. We've had conferences for 27 years and Walt talked about that. With masters we started it and Carmen passed away about two and a half years into the program and a man by the name of Lloyd Ziegler then took over the program but we had 12 the first year in masters where they gave a year of their life to God. The second year we had 18, the third year 28. This is the, the young people giving one year of their life to God. And right now, I guess masters, I, I'm sure the thing, Louine, that blesses me more than anything else, number one, knowing that these kids are praying in the spirit, but secondly, it's knowing that there's been probably hundreds of thousands of verses that have been memorized. And there was just two guys got together, wanting to commit their life to God, praying in the spirit, meditating on scripture, and the rest is history. But I feel like the latter will be greater, the former, how does that go? The latter will be greater than the former. And driving down the freeway, this is a while ago, I'm driving, praying in the spirit, and all of a sudden that verse hit me. And I went over it over and over and over many, many times, and it didn't have the impact like it did that day, because it said, I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Call on me, and I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things which you do not know. And I, I, I repeated it, I'm yelling it at the top of my voice. My car is going like this down the freeway. I mean, I'd have been caught by the cops, they'd have thought I was on drugs or something, but that verse just hit me like a ton of bricks. And there's people here in this room right now, God's giving you a vision, and I pray as we pray in the Spirit here in just a minute, that that vision is going to take on a life like you've never had before. Because as you pray in the Spirit, there's going to be a purifying of your inner man. Your sins will be forgiven. There's going to be a flow of the anointing of the Holy Spirit that you've never experienced before. Just like I had when I was 12 years old. You're going to experience that. And your vision will, will take a new focus. And you guys have hope. You, how many believe you have hope through Christ? Okay? And Jesus is telling you, here's the formula. Don't leave Jerusalem. Don't leave this place, the Dream Center. But wait for what the Father has promised. You'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you'll be my witnesses. Think about Peter when he preached. 3,000 came to Christ. They had to give up everything. Uh, they were ostracized from their families. These people that would make a commitment to Christ and baptize the Holy Spirit in water, that was it. The families disowned them. They had a funeral for them. This is what Jewish custom back in those days. They, and then the martyrs, you know, they're willing to die for the cause of Christ. It may happen that way down the road right here in the United States of America. But you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. How many can say amen to that? Yeah. How many have received the gift? Let me see. Stand up if you have. Okay, stand up. Okay, I want you now to say thank you, Jesus. Okay, sit down. <laughs> Okay, you that haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, stand up. If you haven't, stand up. Don't be afraid. It's no big deal. We're not going to bite you. We love you. Okay, if you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, come on up here. I'm going to pray with you right now. Come on, right here, right now, for this altar. Don't sit down. Come on, get up. You want the gift, brother. You in the yellow shirt. 